former player, former All Black, former NPC winning coach, former Islanders coach and former All Black coach. And one of our major sponsors, he's sponsored Southern for a long, long time. And the club really appreciates what he's done for us over the years. I'd like to introduce Laurie Mays to speak on Alan Steves. Thank you, Gareth. I guess that's the, uh, the downside of being a fullback. You get the ball after everybody else has had a crack with it. Um, there's been an awful lot of uh, very nice comments made about Alan today, and uh, so I've had to re sort of rejig what I was going to say, but there's a few core things that, are, that, are, that I think are very important, both for this club. Uh, to understand where it's come from and why it's maintained its greatness. Um, I, I remember, I played here as a schoolboy rugby as well, but I remember coming over here uh, as soon as I got finished studying, and I started uh, playing my senior rugby at Southern the same year that Ellen took over. Just before I get into the, onto that, I just want to talk about why I think, and, and I don't think it's arguable, why this club has maintained its strength of position as Dunedin's leading club outside of university. And I think, I disagree with Murray. I think we're on a par with university. Yeah. Yeah. The, the reason is very simple. You did hear Murray talk about the two Cavanas, And I was very fortunate that right through my playing career, uh, Vic Cavanna was a bit of a mentor to me. Um, and when he had something to say, it was clean between the eyes. There was no big your pardons, ifs or buts. Uh, <clears throat> you, you, and you took it. There was his great, le the legend that he left Southern was to do with its style of play. And everything, of course, has to start up front. He was a great coach. He left that legacy. Then we had the Roy Napier come along who played under Cavanna. And he instilled the same into He kept the legend going. And then Alan came along. And Alan expanded what coaching is all about. People have mentioned June today, and, and I'm very pleased that that happened. But what Alan brought into, and you heard Murray talk about a family, well, it was the first time I'd been in a rugby team where we were a family. And we didn't only have Dad down here looking after us, and teaching us how to play rugby and what being a team member was. But we had mother over there looking after our wives and girlfriends and us when we needed it. Yeah. And, and June, the influence you had on all of us as young people growing up, wanting to be larrikins, um, especially on a Saturday night when we'd come to your place for drinks. And, <laughs> and I've got to say this, we did have some larrikins. Red Arnold was the biggest destroyer of property I think I ever knew. <laughs> but he never put a finger out of place at Alan's place. <laughs> and, and, and apart from it being the respect that Alan and June were held in, I think he was frightened of June. <laughs> so, and, and I well remember when, I had my, when my kids were very young, Alan and June's boys used to come and look after them, babysit them for me. So it's a whole family thing that came up. Roy Napier came along, great Southern coach. Alan comes along and continues the legacy. And he's probably been the major contributor. In fact, I won't say probably, I'll say definitely, has been the major contributor and the guy that tied it all together at a time when life was changing and society was changing. He held it all together. We, we, we thought, when I, when I was a kid, I came over here and I thought I was okay. Uh, and we were larrikins and we liked to go out and have an awful lot of fun. But, but it was the influence. Now, we can't just talk about the great things that Alan did. There was a team there. You can't talk about Alan being a coach without talking about Dave Smith. Now, Dave and Alan were like Tweedledum and Tweedledee. And there's a lot of things I remember. I remember getting in a ruck one, one night out here. And Wait. Bullshit. <laughs> Bullshit. 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 
And who beat the Jim Simpsons and the Lindsay Clarks to jump all over me? No way. Dave Smith. <laughs> and David would be frothing at the mouth getting these guys wound up because our forwards were quite soft in those days and Dave had this real hard job about trying to toughen them up. <laughs> but Ellen won three banners and I remember those teams with, with, with great fondness. Not only did we have good players, we played a brand of rugby and I'm not going to elaborate on that because Bill Sumble did it this morning, but we played, played a brand of rugby that we were all intricately involved in. Yeah. It wasn't just the forwards. I was fullback. And I look at Jim Simpson laughing on there and I thought, and, 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 and I used to have it, an equal role to play Jim. <laughs> forwards, they, never, they think us backs didn't even do anything. But, but, when they're sitting inside their own 22 and they're panting and puffing and some scrawny little fullback gets a ball and puts it into the other 22, they at least have the cuties here to walk run past and say thanks. <laughs> there was a third member of that great coaching team that was an inspiration to every player in this club, and that was Alan's captain, Selwyn Ingalls. Selwyn was the best rugby player that I ever played with or against. And he epitomised the commitment that Alan and Doug put into it and Selwyn led it on the field. Now I played with and against people like Chris Laidlaw and Earl Curtin. Selwyn Ingalls was a better club rugby player than them. And he was certainly a better club rugby player than I was. I had the, the very good benefit to be there at the start of Alan's time and still be there when Alan moved on. There were things that Alan stood for. It was commitment. It was honesty. And his favourite saying was always, nothing succeeds like success. <laughs> and boy, how true was that. I remember my early days up in the old pavilion up here. You people don't know how lucky you are, this luxury palace. We used to be on sawdust in our changing rooms up there. And We'd have a game. We didn't always play well those, that first year when we were up there, and, and so we had to train on a Sunday. And this is after a fairly heavy night, because in those days we were youngsters and drink driving wasn't an issue, so you had a couple of beers. And we'd come out here, and if Alan couldn't get half the team chucking up last night's beer out on the, uh, out, out on the ground, he, he wouldn't have thought he had had a decent practice. But then we'd go back in, and we'd sit around the table playing thumper. So all the hard work we'd done out on the paddock was all destroyed again by us drinking two or three kegs of beer playing thumper. I'll never forget. And his brother, Ian, he was the leader of that, I might add. He was one of the best thumper players I'd ever seen. Alan's commitment was infectious. And he set many young rugby players on their path to their careers. And I'm just going to talk about myself for a moment because I'm sure a lot of these other players here will, will associate with the same thing. I came from high school first 15 where we played pansy rugby. Or, and in actual fact we didn't because Lee Smith was captain of that team and about halfway through the year when our forwards weren't going that good, Dave used to come along, we'd have a special Sunday practice that the school didn't know about. So Dave toughened those guys up a bit, so we started to play some real rugby. And we, we certainly got a lot better after that. But <clears throat> Alan taught me this, a number of things that he taught me, is that your absolute commitment and honesty your, to your team and effort that you put into every game, because he did it himself. Every single practice, every single team talk, Every packet of cigarettes <laughs> during the games. But everything we did, or everything that Alan did, was total commitment. And it was infectious. Because we liked Alan so much, we respected him so much, everything that he portrayed to us, we took on board as players. And he made men out of us. And he made us appreciate just what being in a team is all about. And Alan, I think that is rather special. And personally, I'd like to thank you for that because 
That is what set me on my career. There is no doubting in my mind whatsoever. I might have become an All Black, but it started right here and now in this club. And all you young players, any of you still here, you remember that. Yeah. Because this is where it starts. So it wasn't... He extracted the very best out of us by demonstrating to us everything we needed to do as a player. And he was a hell of a good coach on the basics and on team plans. It was the first thing I learned about game plans and patterns of rugby. It was coming over here and playing it with, with, uh, with Southern. And Alan and Dave, as I've said, they complemented each other outstandingly. So Alan, I, I don't want to go on anymore. I'm sh I hope that I have said a lot of things that all of our team here would, would want to come up here and say. And personally, I went on to become a coach. I coached our seniors for three years and, and, and then went on to do other things. While I was the senior coach, guess who taught me how to select? Alan Stevens was my fellow selector. And he taught me the protocols how to work through and select players that fit into your team pattern. Any coach, it's easy to pick the first 10 players and they're the core of your team. Picking the next five to complement them is a different story. And Alan taught me what that was about. And that gave me the same grounding that he gave me as a player, he gave me as a coach to go on, I think we might have won three championships when I was coaching and Alan was my right hand man. And, and then I took that on to Otago and, and, and on to the All Blacks. So, Alan, I just want you to understand that's how I view my time starting here and the influence that you had on my life and my career. Thanks very much. Great service that he's done with the Southern Rugby Club. You're a star. Yeah. <laughs> 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 and I'm going to give it to Barry just to reply. Take on our behalf. Uh, thanks, Laurie. Um, truly humbling words. And uh, I'm sure that uh, Dad, there's nothing more that Dad would like than to be standing up here talking to you tonight. Um, but just unfortunately you can't. Um, but it's my honour to, to pass on to you guys here tonight um, his thoughts uh, and the things that he would want to say. Um, firstly, obviously, we want to make special thanks to the club, um, to Billy uh, and Roy uh, for your understanding and help uh, in organising this tonight. Uh, and especially to Billy and, and Roy uh, for your ongoing support with Dad um, and looking after him on sad days, bring him to rugby when, when the family are unable to. So thank you very much. For your time. Um, uh, and indeed, Dad would like to thank all those players uh, who played with him um, and who have been involved with Dad as a coach. Um, for coming tonight, and especially those that have, have travelled uh, some distance to be here. And, and again, it's, it's humbling for not only for Dad, but, but for the family as well. Um, we've talked about this night for, for some time and the memories that Dad's had. Um, and it's hard to single out any particular people, and we're certainly not going to stand here and try to, but there are a couple of people that, that, that Dad did want to make mention of. Um, and Laurie has mentioned... Um, both of them tonight, and, and that's um, Dave Smith. Uh, he wanted to make mention of Dave, as Dave was a big part of his coaching career and coaching here at Southern, and, and, and the success that they had um, were a big part of Dave Smith as well. So um, he just wanted to make mention of Dave. And obviously Selwyn Ingalls as well, um, who also he's made mention a couple of times today. Um, and also probably to those who have passed away 
um, who are unable to be here with us tonight. Um, but I'm sure that with all the stories that are being told, um, that their spirits are here and I'm sure they're having a good time as well. Um, also, um, as well as uh, Dad's brother Ian, um, who's been a big part of Dad's life um, throughout his childhood, playing and coaching. Um, and again, his support uh, is, has been much appreciated by Dad and by the family. Um, as far as some of the memories that, that we've talked about, and, and again, Laurie's talked about the club rooms down, down by where the Fitzroy Hotel was with the sawdust on the floor. Um, remember many Sundays uh, going in there in the, the, the senior room, the, they had a fire in the corner. Uh, the fire was roaring. Uh, and it was a great day for training and opening oysters. And I remember as a young fella, Sunday trainings were always special for us. And, and it's good to see Blair here, or obviously the chairman, but Blair was a wee bit younger than me, but Sundays down at the club we used to run around just having an absolute ball with you know, AB as well as you know Brian and Bob were part of those teams as well, so we were having a great time. Um, one of my vivid memories was actually out here on a Sunday they used to play touch quite a lot, and uh, I remember coming out and seeing Dad just with blood pouring out of his face, just blood everywhere, and his nose was twisted and, and facing his ear um, after being tackled actually, I think by Laurie in the corner. <laughs> Clarky, no, okay. Um, obviously there was a lot of parties at Pisa Street. Um, spent many a, a Saturday night in my bedroom trying to get to sleep with all this rowdy noise going on out in the lounge. Thumper, name of the game, what's the name of the game? T-H-U-M-P-E-R, spell Stumper. It's all you used to hear. So maybe some of you premier guys today might want to come over and take on a couple of these fellas at a game of Thumper and, and see how you get on. Waking up on Sunday mornings after those um, parties and nine times out of ten, Billy Somerville lying on the couch in his undies and seeing him sleep. Yeah. Kevin Henderson alongside him. Um, but just finally, um, Dad's obviously had a huge amount of success as, as a coach, um, as an administrator, and as a player. Um, won three championships uh, and those are all things that he's very very proud of um, but I think dad used to always say success breeds success like Laurie said but one of the other things he always used to say was it's nice to know nice people and at the end of the day the things that mean the most are the friendships that you make along the way um, and I know that you guys mean the world to dad um, and we just thank you so much for coming and being part of today. Thank you.